SCP-914, also called the Clockwork Machine, is known for being able to upgrade or downgrade anything that is placed inside of it. But this raises many questions, such as what would happen if we ran our favorite SCPs through this machine. Which is why in this video, we explore what would happen if we put SCP-173 in SCP-914. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel with notifications on, so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos, and soon we are exploring more interesting hypothetical SCP scenarios. To begin with, let's quickly remind ourselves of what 914 really is. SCP-914 is a machine consisting of a central mass of clockwork flanked by two boots. An item placed inside the first one will be refined by the machine and come out as a new product in the other boot. A control panel displays five settings that affect the items. Rough, coarse, one-to-one, -one, fine and very fine. The first preset destroys an item. The coarse setting effectively dismantles it. The one-to-one -one preset replaces whatever is inserted with something similar. The fine setting improves an item, sometimes with anomalous properties. And the very fine preset greatly improves an item, always with anomalous properties. Unfortunately, SCP-914 hasn't been tested with 173 as of now, but but this doesn't mean we can't find any relevant tests in SCP-914's experiment log. In fact, there are quite a lot of interesting 914 tests which are related to the concrete statue in one way or another. For example, on one occasion, a Garden Lion cement statue was inserted on the one-to-one -one setting, and out of all possible outcomes, a life-sized model of 173 was the result. Also, in a different test, a quarter of a pound of purple stress putty was ran on the fine setting, and once again, the result was a detailed, although downsized sculpture of SCP-173, which didn't show any signs of sapience or automation. Seeing as not once, but twice, SCP-914 created a model of 173 out of ordinary materials. The Foundation assumed that the clockwork machine can likely produce a living copy of the statue, but they weren't fully satisfied, so they decided to push SCP-914 in an attempt to prove this. They inserted 100 kilograms of modeling clay, one bucket of yellow paint and several tubes of other colored paint. The fine setting was selected, and as you can probably guess, a life-sized model of SCP-173 was the result, which fortunately for all researchers was once again just a sculpture. So at this point, the scientists realized that they're playing with fire, and they decided to stop fooling around. Alright, we get it. SCP-914 likes to create models of the statue. But what if we inserted the real 173 and tried to upgrade it? Luckily, this has already been explored in an unofficial experiment log on Reddit. In this log, SCP-173 is tested with all five of 914's settings, beginning with the first one, rough. The statue was inserted, and the machine grinded during the entire process. A pile of crushed concrete and metal scraps was the result. However, these remains were anomalous, because upon breaking eye contact with said materials, they moved randomly. Inserting SCP-173 on the course setting also caused the machine to jerk during the process, but this time, a cube of concrete, a cube of steel and a puddle of Krylon brand spray paint was the result. These cubes were also anomalous, because breaking eye contact with them caused them to appear behind an individual. But luckily, apart from scaring whoever they moved behind, they were totally harmless. Things became more interesting when one-to-one -one was selected, because on this setting, a slightly discolored and misshapen SCP-173 came out of 914. The statue behaved normally, but had a taller, more slender appearance and was dark brown in color. Also, the new statue's face was different, but still followed the general aesthetic to the original. As expected, inserting SCP-173 in 914 on the fine preset made things worse, because this setting yielded an SCP-173 that was apparently unaffected by eye contact. 
However, it was subsequently discovered that the statue moved freely only when it was observed and became immobile when all eye contact was broken. And of course, this made SCP-173's containment a lot more difficult. And finally, the statue was inserted in SCP-914 on the very fine setting. The result was an entity that could move at speeds up to 70 miles per hour and could not be observed in any spectrum of light. And, of course, the newly upgraded SCP-173 also attacked people by crunching their necks. However, in some cases, this entity didn't attack people right away, likely because the subjects were looking in 173's direction. But of course, it was near impossible to maintain eye contact with the entity, because the statue was totally invisible. However, the scientists had an idea. They tried to coat the entity in a visible substance, such as paint. This proved effective in making SCP-173 visible, and also confirmed that observing the entity made it immobile, but this also revealed that the new statue had a vastly different shape than the original SCP-173. It resembled a spider, and the entity also appeared to change to a standing position in order to reach the necks of its victims. So, as we see, the SCP-173 vs. 914 experiment definitely didn't disappoint, especially the outcomes on the fine and very fine setting. And even though this log is posted on Reddit and as such isn't considered to be canon, the results do appear reasonable. However, this document is far from comprehensive and there are a lot of other possible outcomes, some of which are a lot funnier and more devastating than the ones we discussed above. Inserting the statue in SCP-914 on the rough and coarse settings isn't all that compelling, because 173 will always be destroyed or dismantled, and the remaining pieces will sometimes retain anomalous properties. The one-to-one -one preset is when things get more interesting. This is because if we insert 173 on this setting, contrary to popular belief, SCP-914 will not necessarily return a similar statue. This became apparent during a test when a picture of 173 was inserted in the clockwork machine on the middle setting, and instead of a picture of a similar statue, a picture of SCP-096 was the result. And in general, the one-to-one -one setting always returns something similar, but not necessarily a variation of the same thing. So following this logic, it's definitely possible that inserting 173 on 1 to 1 may return a totally different SCP anomaly, for example 096, which of course would be devastating because the scientists would expect an entity which needs to be observed and would all see SCP-096's face as a result. And this isn't only limited to the middle setting, because the clockwork machine could mix and match 173 with other aspects of SCPs on different settings as well. For example, on the fine preset, it's possible that SCP-914 places a picture of 096 on the statue, a very dangerous scenario which could easily lead to a massive scale containment breach. It's also widely believed that the fine setting could deliver an SCP-173 which makes you blind when you see it, or a statue which isn't immobilized when under observation. Furthermore, we are all familiar with the SCP-173 revised entry, the document that details how the statue gains the ability to multiply using the red liquid it secretes and causes an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. And if we insert 173 in SCP-914 on the very fine setting, the preset which greatly improves whatever is placed inside, it's definitely possible that the statue will gain the ability to reproduce produce itself, something which could definitely cause an apocalypse. And finally, on the very fine setting, 914 could enhance SCP-173's capabilities so much to the point when the statue becomes a memetic agent that isn't physically restrained by anything and instantly causes an event where your neck is randomly crunched, something which would likely end our entire civilization. 
So to summarize, inserting the statue in SCP-914 under rough settings appears to be a viable termination strategy, and unsurprisingly, running 173 through the clockwork machine on the fine and very fine settings ends up being a recipe for disaster. So what do you think? Would SCP-173 become an event that crunches everyone's necks instantly? Or are we going to get a similar statue? Perhaps even a different SCP? Let us know in the comments. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more SCP theory videos.